Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, you'll tell me if it's not enough. Uh, okay, so that was too much. Okay, can we stop now? Yes. Okay. Okay, so this is yours. Okay, okay. No, oh, I'm going to do it myself. I think there's a last one. I'll give it to you. Okay. Okay, let's get started. So, um, hello everyone. Let's start now. Um, so welcome to this session. This is about uh, productive Java E and HTML5 development with Eclipse or with DevOps tools as I will talk about uh, just after. My name is Xavier Coulon. I work at Red Hat. I was supposed to deliver this talk with Marion Labuda who also works at Red Hat, but unfortunately he has the flu so he cannot, can, couldn't come. So I'm going to do it alone. Um, so before this talk will be really just a long demo where I will show you many things, but before going into uh, uh, my uh, uh, DevOps Tools uh, ID, I'm going to talk about what DevOps Tools and Dev Developer Studio are. So who, who knows about uh, DevOps Tools or DevOps Developer Studio? Okay, quite a few people. So uh, basically, uh, DevOps Tools is a set of Eclipse plugins for DevOps technology. Um, so we make plugins for um, server adapters, so you can deploy your application on Wildfly or uh, EAP or AS7. We make tooling uh, for JPA, we use uh, Ibernet tools. We make tooling for Java E, so JSF, CDI, JAXRS, web services. Uh, we make tooling for OpenShift, so you can deploy your application on OpenShift. We also make tooling for uh, HTML5 uh, mobile development with Cordova. Um, we make tooling for uh, where you integrate uh, with Forge, uh, with Aquilian. Uh, we also make a lot of tooling around uh, integration stack, what we call integration stack, which is uh, everything related to BPM, BPMN, etc. So I'm not going to show everything now today, but I'm going to give you uh, an idea of what we can do with uh, JBoss Tools and JBoss Developer Studio. And one last thing is, uh, DevOps Tools is a set of uh, plugins for Eclipse. So you have your own Eclipse on your machine and you go to the marketplace, Eclipse Marketplace, or uh, our update site, and you install the plugins you want to use. We also have Developer Studio, which is basically the same thing, but it's all bundled in a single big jar file uh, with its own installer for uh, Linux, Windows, and Mac OS and you get everything ready, configured, and everything working together. You get Eclipse with all the required plugins and uh, JBoss Tools plugins on top of it. So let's get started with the demo now. Um, what I'm going to do in this demo, I'm going to start with an existing database. So let me, let me sit down and uh, show you. Uh, so I have this uh, H2 database running on my machine. It's uh, H2 running in server mode. Um, I can uh, connect uh, to my database. Okay, let me just uh, 
refresh this thing. Oh, come on. Okay. <coughs> Looks like I have some issues with network. Okay, it works now. Okay. So I have this small database. Uh, we have a conference here, which, is, which has one entry. Uh, we have um, a session table here, which has, uh, well, one entry as well. It's a small database, OK? Uh, we have uh, speakers here. We have two speakers, myself and Marion. And uh, we have uh, this kind of uh, 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 relation table, uh, which allows us to map uh, session with speakers. So basically, the idea is we have um, a conference. A conference can have multiple sessions, and the session can have multiple speakers, and speakers can speak to multiple sessions. So basically, that's what we're doing today. Okay. So we are going to build an application with from this thing, from this uh, database. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, start with Maven. because we also have tooling for Maven. So what I'm going to start with, I'm going to create a new Maven project. I'm going to keep this uh, default settings. I'm going to use, um, we have um, in the catalogs, there is a Wildfly. Um, there should be. OK, so it's just waiting, just wait a, a few seconds. So we have this uh, Wildfly uh, Java E7 web app blank archetype. It's a long name. Um, and we are going to keep this group ID, and we are going to name our application, uh, or oh, artifact ID, conference uh, schedule. OK. And so we are going to have this uh, project set up for us. And one thing we can see, uh, uh, so we have uh, this POM, POM file which already comes with a lot of dependencies that we want to use for Java E7 development. So that's pretty cool. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, quite a few dependencies that come from this uh, BOM, uh, Bill of Materials, uh, uh, Maven uh, projects. But also, uh, we already have some, set, some, uh, some tooling that has been set up for us for this project. So we have support for JAXRS and for GTA <coughs> mainly. So what's happening, what's happening here is uh, when you, uh, we have this uh, M2EWTP uh, plugin, which is like an extension for M2E, which itself is uh, Maven integrated in Eclipse. So M2EWTP is going to look at your class pass. When you add a library in your project or when you import a project in your, in your workspace, <coughs> um, M2EWTP is going to look at some existing classes uh, in the jar files you are going to import. And so if it finds some matches, uh, it's going to set up some facet on your project. So for example, in this, uh, in this uh, application, uh, we have some tooling for JAXRS, and so we have some classes in, in our class pass. We have uh, uh, um, JAXRS APIs, and so we have support for JAXRS, and the same goes for uh, JPA. So here we have some JPA. So as you can imagine, we start with an existing database. So the first thing we'll do is, is reverse engineer these uh, database tables and make some uh, JPA ent entities. So we have this persistence uh, file here. Uh, and what I'm going to do, so we have this uh, data source uh, name here, which we'll use uh, later. But what I'm going to change from these default settings is uh, create job, because I don't want to drop my existing tables when I stop my application. Of course, I want to keep it, to keep them. Create job is a good thing to use when you make some uh, unit testing, for example. So I'm going to set update here. And well, I can make set this value to true, so I can see logs uh, SQL statements uh, in my <coughs> console. OK. So as I imported this project, uh, I have this uh, Ibernet configuration that has been created for us. 
But I cannot access this database yet. I cannot access this database because uh, we have a JTA data source here, which doesn't mean really anything for Eclipse because there is no, it's not deployed on, a, on an application yet. Um, but what we can do, um, we can use this um, data source explorer view here. And actually, I already configured this uh, data source. So it's, I'm using um, this database settings. So my database name is conference. And it's using this URL here, which is uh, basically what we have uh, here. OK? And username is SA, and password is blank. That's the default things with H2. I can connect to it, so it's OK. okay. Um, and what I'm going to do now here on my conference project uh, with JPA, on the JPA properties, I'm going to bind this uh, project to this uh, data source connection. Okay, and now if I go, come back here and refresh, I can connect to my database. Okay. So now we have this project and this database linked together. So what I can do, I can make something like this. I can say, okay, no, JPA, generate entities from tables. I'm going to use um, uh, this uh, package. Uh, was it example or examples? Oh, I don't remember, anyway. So conference schedule. I'm going to put uh, my entities in a domain uh, package. OK. And so um, Eclipse is going to use Ibernet tools, and Ibernet tools is going to generate some entities for us. <coughs> OK, so we have classes here now. And so as, as we can expect, uh, we have um, three, en three entities, conference, session, and speaker. Um, in the conference class, we have this uh, get sessions, which has a one to many relationship with uh, session. And session has uh, speakers, uh, get speakers, which has a many to many relationship with a joint table. This is exactly what we have in our database, okay? The thing is, Ibana Tools is using um, foreign keys, can find foreign keys between tables and understand the logical model behind. Okay, so we have a database, some JPA entities. Now we are going to expose these uh, entities using uh, Jaxaras. So for this, I'm going to use Forge. Um, so Forge is going to, to, to start uh, uh, in Eclipse uh, virtual machine. So Forge 2, um, previous vers version of DevOps tools uh, included Forge 1, which you could use from command line. Now with Forge 2, you have uh, menus or wizards. Uh, so it's even uh, more, more integrated. And so what I'm going to do, um, we have this uh, REST generate endpoint from entities, uh, wizard. <coughs> so I'm going to use REST 2. I'm going to keep these default settings. I'm just going to change here, <coughs> conference schedule. Uh, yeah, let me just copy this. Um, and so we are going to have this REST application. So for those who are not familiar with uh, JaxRS, uh, you have your endpoints, so classes annotated with add pass and then methods with add get, add post, etc., and so on and so forth. But you also need a um, uh, uh, JaxRS activator, something that is going to boot uh, JaxRS. And this is uh, the goal of this uh, REST application class. Um, yeah, let's just use uh, JB3.2. Um, and then I'm going to select all um, entities that we have. I'm going to expose, uh, no, I'm going to uh, say that uh, content type, return content type can be JSON since we are going to use H build an HTML5 application or client. Uh, we are going to uh, exchange messages using JSON format. I'm going to keep this uh, target package, same target package. But what we're going to do here is use uh, this option, expose DTOs for JPA uh, entities. The reason is, um, in this model, we have uh, a conference and a session. 
or a conference can have multiple sessions and a session is linked back to the conference. So if we want to um, marshal, uh, marshal these entities and send them back to the browser, uh, we, may, uh, we may end up with a, like, uh, an infinite loop where you, you're going to start uh, printing your conference and then printing the session, then printing the conference again and the session again and it goes on until uh, you get a stack overflow. So that's not what we want to do. If we choose this expose DTOs uh, uh, option, Forge is going to generate some DTO classes, which is like boiler, boiler type code. It's a bit annoying, but it has this benefit of uh, breaking this infinite loop. And so when we, uh, when we are going to uh, marshal a conference, we'll have this uh, conference as one session, for example, and this session has this ID, and that's it. And then client is going to take this ID and make a subsequent call to get details for this session. That's one way to break this uh, problem. Okay. Um, and then we can uh, invoke Forge and let it generate some code for us. Okay. So it's been generated. Um, there's a tiny bug actually with Forge in this version that we have. Uh, that's something uh, which hopefully will be fixed soon. And I'm going to fix it now. Um, there is a mismatch between primi primitive long and uh, long classes. So well, I'm going to fix that. I need to do it three times actually. Okay, now, uh, well, this marker should, should disappear. This disappear. Now, we have some JAXRS tooling, as I mentioned before, um, and as you can see, this uh, tooling, since we have um, JAXRS endpoints, I can navigate from uh, this uh, node here, JAXRS Web Services, and I can see, I can go to my code, and I can see here I have like a, uh, you know, a synthetic view of every endpoint that I, my application is going to expose. Okay, let's carry on. Um, now let's talk about JAXRS for a, a little more. Um, so this is, uh, this is the code that has been generated for us. So JAXRS, I showed you one thing that JAXRS tooling does is uh, uh, analyze your code and retrieve every, every class, every method that is annotated with some JAXRS annotations, such as get, pass, produces, consumes, etc. And it's going to make this uh, node in the project explorer, so we have this view. It also provides you with content assist. For example, here, um, I can see that uh, ID here uh, matches this, uh, well, this uh, proposal for ID here matches this ID value here, or parameter name, actually. And you also have some, some validation, so if I make something wrong here, uh, if I put some uh, extra character, um, I have an error because, uh, I have an error here because uh, there is no par pass parameter named IDE, which is an error, but uh, you can also just get a warning here that ID is not going to be used because actually it's not a problem in itself, it's just a warning. And this kind of thing can be, uh, this kind of level of error can be configured in the preferences if you want to make it an error or just ignore it. Okay, let's uh, fix this back. Um, what can we do now? Well, maybe we can export, uh, test these uh, endpoints. So I have my server here. I have, well, actually, many servers, um, Wildfly. Um, I'm going to check the configuration here for Wildfly. Uh, okay, and so I have this data source. Oops, sorry, sorry about that.
Okay, so this data source uh, I did it before, so it's already configured. I have this data source here whose GNDI name matches what we have in persistence.xml, of course, and it's going to use this connection URL, the same as we had before. So I can start my um, project. What I can do also is something like this. Um, I can run this. So I'm going to like run this endpoint. I know that the term is a bit weird. But, um, I'm going to like deploy this endpoint on this wild file. Uh, okay. uh, why is it? Uh, Did I, did I start the wrong server? I think I, I started the wrong server. Let me take the correct. Okay, that's, that's better. Okay. That's a cool thing with demo, it doesn't always work. Oh, okay, I forgot something. Sorry, again. Um, this template, um, this archetype, um, comes with uh, its own uh, data source, conference schedule data source here, um, which I'm going to remove, and I don't need faces, JAXA and JSF, so I'm going to delete these two files. <coughs> um, fully publish and let's restart. Okay. So now, what do we have? Well, we have this web service tester. So when I when I select a node here and I say I want to run this endpoint on the server, I'm going, I'm going to have this web service test of view which is already uh, automatically opened for me. And it comes with the same uh, URL, URL template. So I'm going, to, I'm going to change the value here. Well, actually I should, I sh if, I, if I press run here, I should have something like name, ID, value, uh, you define it yourself, type, and we take this regular expression. For some reason on macOS, there is a bug and um, it doesn't appear. So instead, I'm going to make something like this. I'm going to say it's conference ID one, I think. Let me just verify again. Yes, ID one. And if I press play, I get my result here. So this is basically what, uh, what would be sent to a, uh, to a client when calling this URL. Okay, so we have something that works. Um, so we have a database, DPA entities exposed with REST endpoints. Um, I'm not going to go through every uh, operations here, but basically we have some crude operations. Um, now, what we want to do is uh, build a UI from this. And so I'm going to use Forge again, and I'm going to use this uh, scaffold uh, Operation. I'm going to use AngularJS. We have two options for now: uh, Faces uh, and AngularJS. Um, Java Server Faces. Yes. Um, I'm going to use CI11. And I'm going to generate some things, uh, some uh, view, some views for all entities. Uh, I don't need to generate REST resources again, uh, so I'm going to carry on with this. Okay, and now in my web app I have all these things that have been created for me, some views um, and some, uh, some uh, JavaScript code. So let's just close this thing. Actually, I'm going to close. Um, okay. 
You need to close everything. <coughs> and what we can do now, I'm going to re <coughs> rest, uh, well, I can try something like this. I'm going to show it in browser theme. So browser theme is like a um, uh, mobile simulator. Actually, it's quite uh, tiny on the screen, but uh, it's not an emulator. It's not going to run like um, uh, iPhone. It's just a simulator. But at least you get this idea of how it can run on uh, on your uh, on the mobile, provided uh, as, well. You need something like a bigger screen, I guess. I mean, higher resolution. Um, so I'm, I think I'm going to stick with uh, classic uh, web browser. Actually, I'm going to show something else. Um, we have also support for uh, live reloader. So um, let me start this thing. I'll come back to this dialogue I just after. Um, OK. It will be better as well. So live reload. Um, the idea of Live Reload, so Live Reload is an existing open source project, and the idea is you have this uh, plugin running in your browser, and when you click on this uh, plugin here, this button here, what's going to happen is uh, this extension of this browser, yeah, browser extension is going to add a script in your page, and this script is going to open a WebSocket connection to your, uh, to on your machine, on your uh, local host, uh, is it like 55, 7, 19 ports, something like this? And so once you have this WebSocket connection open between your browser and some live reload server running on your machine, as soon as you make a change on your, uh, on your machine, the WebSocket, uh, the server is going to use this WebSocket connection to send a command to your browser to refresh, to reload the page. Um, so this is something that has been existing before. What we did with, uh, with JBoss tools is we implemented this live reload server just inside Eclipse using uh, Jetty. So what we can do is uh, when you make a change on, your, on some HTML or JavaScript or CSS file, this file is going to be redeployed on Wi-Fi and then we get uh, an event back to say this file has, file has been deployed and we use this, this WebSocket connection and notify the browser. So basically, you don't have to hit the refresh button. So that's one thing. And I'm going to show it now, uh, well, hopefully, if we have enough uh, space on this page. Um, so for this, let's go to the conference. Uh, I'm going to check the details for this conference. So we have this conference here uh, in Berlin, um, but the session is just zero here. So that's not really uh, nice. Um, let me just remove this one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this in the code. Um, so details for the conference are here. And uh, we have um, we have sessions here. And sessions come from the content that we've seen before comes from this S this uh, sec sessions selection list, sorry. And we display the s.txt. Uh, and this is what is wrong, and this is what we are going to fix now. Um, let's go to the edit conference controller. And we have this, uh, we find this session selection list, and text is named is item.id. And I'm going to replace this item.name. I'm going to save and come back here. And as you can see, the page just got refreshed. And now we have our uh, content uh, updated with some uh, name instead of uh, ID. So that's one thing with Live Reload. Um, so when you do a lot of uh, web development and you have two screens, you can have one screen for your ID, one screen for your web browser, and you can make changes uh, and see in, in real time changes that you make from your uh, editor. Now we can make even some things even even uh, funnier. Um, so can you repeat the name of the plugin? Live Reload. Uh, yes. Thanks. So yes, you have this Live Reload server uh, which is created here as well. Um, 
what you can do as well is uh, live reload on external device. So again, we have this pop-up. So the first time we was to say, okay, we have uh, we are going to create a live reload server. If you don't have one, if you have one, we are going to uh, inject live reload script in the HTML page. So actually, you don't need to install this live reload uh, <coughs> extension on your browser because this extension is just about uh, including this uh, live reload.js script at the bottom of your HTML page. But, well, we can do it from Eclipse. We have this live reload server, which is like a proxy, a man in the middle is going to modify your code. So the cool thing about it is um, you don't need to modify yourself your code in your page. So you, don't need, you do not risk to send something in production with some uh, live reload script at the bottom of your page. And the second benefit is, uh, since you don't need this extension, you don't need this plugin, this browser extension, because we do it uh, on JBoss tool side, you can run it on your real uh, mobile phone. Um, well, I'm, I don't, um, maybe I can do it. Um, maybe we can do it. There is one, uh, one uh, thing that you need to be aware of, is that we allow remote connections on your uh, machine, on your, so, Basically, someone could just connect and see content of your workspace. So you have to be aware of this. And so um, what's going to happen, we provide you with this QR code. QR code are not sexy, but for once it's useful. Uh, and you basically, you scan with your uh, mobile, you scan this uh, QR code. So maybe it's going to work if, you are on, if we are on the same network, hopefully. But um, I'm really not sure uh, about the network here. So. Does it work, Radim, or? No. Okay, so it doesn't work. <coughs> I'm not surprised with this kind of address, but okay. Um, and then you can see your, your, when you make your changes, you can see uh, changes on your uh, iPad or iPhone or Android or whatever, uh, or even uh, over that uh, desktop machine. So you can imagine that you're making a, an application for multiple devices, a web application for multiple devices, and you want to make sure it runs it is responsive on uh, Android and uh, Firef uh, sorry, iPhone. That's the way to do it, if you like. Okay, so we have um, we have this application. Um, I didn't show everything around uh, uh, CDI and uh, JaxOS. We had more things, but I I'm kind of running out of time. What we can do now, maybe, is try to put this application on OpenShift, <coughs> if network allows. Um, so what we can do is configure and say, OK, configure, make or create a new, a new OpenShift application. So I'm going to connect uh, with my existing uh, uh, username and password. And I hope network is going to, to be uh, good enough for this. So um, just as, as we're waiting for uh, something to respond, um, you can go on openship.com and create your own account. Um, it's free. You can create, upload, uh, no, create three applications on OpenShift. And so we provide you with tooling for um, uh, working on, on your uh, project and uh, pushing your changes on OpenShift in real, uh, just as you, as you want. Uh, and we provide you also uh, tooling like this wizard, which doesn't seem to respond, uh, sadly. Um, you can create your application from Eclipse. So you can, and you can configure it. You can say, for example, I want Wildfly or I want um, uh, PHP. Oh, yes, it's working. Um, okay, let's wait a few minutes again. Um, and then you can configure and say, I want something like, uh, I would like uh, MySQL with uh, Wi-Fi, for example. And so you can deploy your application, or you can have a different workflow, which is, okay, I have my application already working on OpenShift with a Git repository, with my code running there, and I want to import this application in Eclipse because I need to work on it again. So that's another way to do it. Um, and then once you have your application running on OpenShift, we provide you with tooling such as um, uh, port forwarding if you want to expose, to get access to some uh, ports on, on your OpenShift uh, uh, application. 
So uh, we could, for example, do some remote debugging. You can uh, put a direct point uh, in your workspace and uh, debug your application on OpenShift. Or you can tail logs and so you can uh, see uh, what's going on with our, your application and all logs are going to be streamed in Eclipse. So let's, let's try something. Um, so I'm going to use this cartridge, uh, Wildfly. I'm going to use the same name as, um, uh, as my project. So my application name and pro project name are the same. Uh, I'm going to use this existing project. And I'm going to create this application. So basically what's happening here, the wizard is going to send a, a request to OpenShift broker. And OpenShift broker is going to find a node somewhere which has a, a room and to create a gear. So OpenShift gear is like your application container. And so once this gear is created, um, it's going to install OpenShift. Uh, Wildfly, it's going to, well, to install Wildfly, you need uh, Java, so it's going to install uh, a JDK. Wildfly <coughs> is going to initialize the Git repository as well, and this Git repository is going to be cloned on your machine and linked to this uh, project in Eclipse. So at once everything is done, uh, you can make pushes and push your code again to OpenShift, and OpenShift is going to build your code and deploy your application. Um, also, there is some DNS settings uh, that needs to be done, and sometimes that's what takes uh, the most time. We wait until uh, DNS uh, responds. But again, it depends on your uh, network uh, performances. Okay. Um, so maybe anyone has any question? when we're waiting and hopefully uh, getting some results. Okay. Okay, so um, this afternoon, well, at 12.30, I will give a lab and, uh, with Radin here who was kind enough to replace Mario, who is not there. Um, and basically, we will go and do the same things again. Um, so if you're interested and if you want to uh, come with your laptop and practice with me and Radim, uh, you're welcome to do so. OK, so we have our application here. It's been created. And now we get this um, message saying, OK, we are going to clone your repository. Let's, let's do it. Um, so. This is going to be cloned. OK, cool. And um, so now we have our application on OpenShift, which is, for example, for now, just an empty application. Um, what, we can, what I can show you uh, quickly here, um, I'm going to show this. We have this uh, .openshift folder here with some uh, configuration, configuration file so you can get access to your uh, 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 server config. And actually, what I need to do is uh, I'm going to create another data source. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this, uh, but I need to name it uh, conference schedule. Okay. Uh, it's going to be conference here. Um, and now what I can do, uh, I have here a server adapter which has been also created for me, confirm schedule, and I can uh, publish. And so now uh, what's happening is uh, I'm pushing my changes. So I'm going to push all my application on OpenShift and it's going to be built um, and deployed. Um, so this is what's happening on OpenShift is going to build my application. First time takes a bit of time because it's a Maven uh, project, so it needs to uh, download tons of, uh, of uh, Maven dependencies. The thing is you have, as you can see, you have uh, 
OpenShift logs running uh, streamed and back in uh, real time in uh, Eclipse console. And what I can show as well, uh, and this will be probably the last thing I will show, <coughs> is uh, I can tail files. Maybe I can, I, let me just wait until this thing is done. Okay, so the so war has been built. It's going to be deployed on Wildfly, and Wildfly is going to restart. And now, so thi these are the logs, the build logs. What I'm going to show now are the server logs. So this is using SSH again, and this is, these are the logs of Wildfly and OpenShift in real time in your uh, machine, okay? So if you want to know what's going on on your uh, server, that's the way to do it. Okay, let's wait a little more. Okay, and now I can show this application. Okay, I've got my application on OpenShift. Um, well, of course I have no da data yet, but uh, as you can see, it's, uh, the URL is control schedule uh, dash x colon, so. That's it. We started with an existing database like 40 years ago, and now we have uh, a full application running on OpenShift uh, with JaxLS and AngularJS, HTML5, and so on and so forth. And I think it's, uh, it's out of time. So do you have any, any more questions? Or otherwise, uh, as I said, in one hour, uh, we have this lab. So you're welcome to come with me, and we can uh, practice together. Thank you. Yes, it's mine. Did you, uh, did you need one or? No, no. So I think they have one, uh, they have one as well, uh, HDMI. Uh, this one is uh, the uh, But, uh, yeah, okay. The projector is so awesome and this is lots of theory. Did you like my presentation or? Yeah, I mean, the net, we knew the network's always an issue. Yeah, 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 so, but, well, I'm getting used to it, so. You tried having OpenShift running locally on your machine. Yes. You can do that. Yes. Uh, I remember I did this at Jetcon like three years ago, yeah. and it was a total failure. Ah. Because uh, I said, it okay. Might be better now. No, no, that was my fault actually. Because I said, okay, uh, I, it was at Boston, and I said, okay, I'm not sure about Wi-Fi. You want to turn that up? Right. <laughs>